Welcome to Stogie Geeks News for October 2nd, 2015. I'm your host, Paul Asadorian. Joined on the lines via Skype by Mr. Will Cooper. Welcome, Will. Hey, Paul. You look like Anchorman there behind that news desk now. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> <laughs> okay. If I knew a funny line from Anchorman, I would use it right now, but I don't. <laughs> I'll work on that for next week. Absolutely. <laughs> Will, what do you got for the news in the cigar industry this week? Well, we'll catch up on a story that came out um, a little over a week ago, but um, Drew Estate is working on another uh, cigar project with Shady Records, and I know this is something of interest to you, and uh, the, the project's going to be called the Shady Southport, and basically what they have done um, is they are um, doing a follow-up project to a previous uh, collaboration they did with Shady um, Records. Um, last year, they released a 5x50 box press Bellicoso in the Undercrown called the Shady 15, and they did that for uh, the 15th anniversary of Shady Records. But uh, I guess things went so well that they've decided to go back to the table. Now, that, that Shady 15 was a very limited release. It was just for the Detroit, Michigan area. Mm -hmm. um, this new um, this new Shady Southpaw project, as it's called, is going to be a more widespread release. We don't know much of the details other than they've announced the project and that Willie Herrera is going to be working on the blend. And obviously it's going to have some tie-ins with uh, Shady Records as well so that's something we can expect early next year um as far as that goes and what is shady records is that a music label is that john yep. oh shady records actually um shady records is a, a record label and they're they're basically famous for um having m and m on their label oh the real slim shady i got gotcha. the real slim shady yes i got gotcha. you uh, they have Excellent. other artists such as um and i'm gonna be honest i'm not a uh, a hip-hop guy but slaughterhouse and bad meets evil you may be a little more familiar with those than me i am not but i know i have, know it's slim shady yeah we may have to dispatch uh, our cigar jukebox buddy dave burke on those that's right that's right but but you know if you look at what drew estate's done with hip-hop music and kind of doing this uh collaboration with cigars they're really, they're really the company that's been on the forefront. You know, you could say that Tatawahe did a lot of that for the for the L.A. rock scene, but here Drew Estate's now going after this market segment, and, and I think it's an interesting collaboration, to say the least. Absolutely. I can't wait to smoke them when they come out. What else you got, Will? Um, so the big news this week is the um, Tatawahe Hide, which is the eighth installment of the Monster series is about to make its way to stores this month. So just in time for Halloween, um, the Tatawai Hide follows up last year's release, which was the Tatawahe Jekyll. Um, and as usual, they are releasing the Tatawai Hide in dress boxes to 13 select retailers. And um, if you are a Tatawai authorized retailer, you'll be able to get a uh, supply of the plain boxes. So, you know, the dress boxes always set off kind of a frenzy as far as chasing those down. Um, but there'll be, it looks like, you know, there'll be plenty of cigars. Um, this is going to be a um, another double Corona type cigar um, in size. So it's going to be the same size as last year's uh, Jekyll. So that should keep, uh, you know, it's kind of Jekyll and Hyde, so to speak, um, at big 7x49. It's going to use a Ecuadorian Sumatra wrapper um, over Nicaraguan binder and filler. Uh, Pete's Ecuadorian Sumatra is awesome, and I can't wait to smoke this one. You know, that, that's a really good point. He, he's really known for Habano and, and Broadleaf. But he's done some really good stuff with Sumatra as Absolutely. far as as far as that goes, and he's done a he's already done a monster with the Sumatra, which is the Wolfman, which which I like the Wolfman a lot. I know there was some mixed results on that. So, and you know he did the Capa Especial, which I think is one of the best Sumatra blends out there. So I kind of like the fact that Pete brought in this Sumatra, and he you know, that, this cigar, that was the cigar I liked was the Capa Especial. I bought oh, a box of those. Fantastic. Yeah, that stick is awesome. So I'm I'm looking forward to this one. You know, it, it, they're either box worthy or box split, in my opinion, at least. To get five of these is great because the marketing behind it is great. The cigars 
are always at least worth some kind of box split or box worthy. Uh, and they develop a lot over time. I think all of his monster blends have had this quality where they develop and change over time. And I think that's something that um, I don't know if Pete does it on purpose with the monster series, but I find it's kind of like collecting a fine wine every every year and then letting it age and seeing how it does. And these, of course, are all different blends for the monster series, but uh, certainly something that you want to have in your humidor. Yep, ab- absolutely. So, you know, and, I, and I'll say this, the, this series just hasn't lost steam. People are still into it. So oh, yeah. it, is, it is newsworthy. The dress boxes will command hundreds of dollars on eBay. Yeah, and if you – actually, the dress boxes um, – Basically, the, the dress box for the Jekyll and the dress box for the Hyde, kind of, you can put them together and it makes an image of Jekyll and Hyde. Oh, so, yeah. So, I mean, Jekyll's just that the empty yeah. box of two of those together is going to sell for thousands of dollars on eBay. I don't know, thousands, but it's going to be big bucks. Yeah, you know, and the retailers who were announced were carrying those dress boxes, I've heard from people saying sold out already. Yeah. So, yeah, because I only got about 30 to 35, I think, allocation-wise. Gotcha. That. Excellent. What else you got, Will? Um, another story that's come out over um, the past couple weeks, and I think it's been a big story, is last week it was announced that uh, FedEx um, was going to end all tobacco shipments beginning on January 5th of next year. Yep. So there was already some limitations with FedEx. So pretty much consumers couldn't ship tobacco. Um, but what's happened as a result now of this new change is this is going to end shipping B two B. So any uh, no one can ship tobacco before FedEx just limited to consumers. Right. I would assume that you need a uh, tobacco license in your state to right. ship tobacco. Is that correct? That's correct. That's correct. Now, international shipments are not affected by this. Now, apparently, this all stems from a lawsuit from the state of New York that was against FedEx over shipping illegal cigarettes. And I talked to Glenn Loop, uh, the executive director of the CRA, and pretty much FedEx took this, we're going to be safe than sorry. We're just not going to deal with this anymore. We don't want to, We don't want the headache anymore with that. Mm-hmm. So they. So it's really, unfortunately, something that happened in the cigarette industry which has kind of affected the premium cigar world. Now, this started setting off some rumors um, in that that next UPS was going to follow suit as well as the Postal Service. And there's, you know, there's some information that's come out about that. That's not exactly correct. Um, UPS has some pretty good controls when it comes to tobacco. So their processes are a little more mature in terms of shipping tobacco. Mm-hmm. And in the Postal Service, it would take an act of Congress to change the uh, of shipping tobacco. Like so, liter- literally an act of Congress. Literally yeah. an act of Congress. Now, there is a bill in Congress to do so, but mm-hmm. it doesn't have a lot of steam right now. Gotcha. So it's not something. Now, that doesn't mean we shouldn't keep an eye on the situation with UPS or the USPS, but there's nothing imminent that's going to happen, I would say, this year in regards to that. So I think from, that situation's still okay. From what I understand, well, USPS is scrambling to get business to be a, a profitable division of the government and keep keep afloat. So I can't imagine they would uh, make any rash decisions to exclude, you know, huge portions of their customer base. No, absolutely. And, you know, and I think UPS, well, I don't, I haven't heard anything from UPS. You can look at that as, okay, FedEx isn't going to take that business. UPS, UPS was, will yeah. scoop it up. So, right. you know, a lot of times these things, the free market economics could actually end up working in favor. Not to say we should be, again, we should keep an eye on this. You know, yeah, I mean, not that happen. FedEx is going out of business because of this, no. but, you know, they can ship all the stuff to CVSs that don't carry tobacco now, too, I guess. Yep, absolutely, absolutely. Anything else, Will? I think we covered it this week. Excellent. Well, make sure you tune in to the Stogie Geek Show every Thursday night, 6 p.m. Eastern Time. We've got a fabulous lineup of guests that we bring on for interviews. Uh, We've got an all-new expanded studio that uh, we're broadcasting from. So uh, make sure you tune in to to that at stogiegeeks.com forward slash live. And all of the cigar news and reviews can be found on cigar-coop.com. Thanks, everyone, for watching.